let's put it all together because now I know it's been a lot of individual components and now you're a little bit eager to see how it all comes together. Well, we started with the green system and I mentioned that the green system can connect via the PTU to the yellow system. The blue system is the joker in the middle, if you will. And while it looks like these three systems right here are connected to each other, they are independent from each other. It is not possible to connect to transfer fluid between the three. Up here, the blue line does not connect to the yellow line. The PTU is a power transfer unit that uses fluid from either side, but mechanically in the middle are only connected via a shaft. To summarize all the components we've just covered, the green system here has its own reservoir, its own shutoff valve, and is driven only by the engine driven pump from engine number one. The yellow system is driven by engine number two by its own engine driven pump as well as in case it's needed an AC electrical pump. The blue system uses an AC driven electrical pump and in case of an emergency the ram air turbine. Each system here has its own accumulator, its own reservoir and the PTU allows the green system and the yellow system to pressurize each other. In the scenario I brought forward before about the green and the yellow system, again, consider that you have the green system right here. Lose pressure because you lost engine number one. There is no electrical pump on this system. Hence, you will have to pressurize it via another mean. The only mean that you have is here via the PTU. So when the pressure then starts to drop in the green system right here, the PTU will sense that pressure and it will use pressurized fluid on this side, on the yellow side, to drive the yellow side here as a motor, which then drives the other side for the, on the green side as a pump. And that pump is as effective in creating pressure as the engine driven pump was bringing it up to 3000 PSI. The PTU is inhibited during first engine start. So when we go out and we start up the aircraft, we normally start engine number two first. You're gonna see why in just a second. As you start engine number two, you will have pressure right here from the engine driven pump and the yellow system will pressurize. You will, at this point do not have blue or green hydraulic pressure. Normal braking we have on the green system. Alternate braking we have on the yellow system. But what we do have on the yellow system is the parking brake and that we need, which is why we start engine number two first. Since the PTU is inhibited during first engine start, it will not pressurize the green system even though the pressure difference between the two is more than 500 PSI. PTU starts operating only after second engine start. If we need to do single engine taxi, we would like to have all operating hydraulic systems so we have both normal and alternate braking available. There is a simple way to pressurize the systems prior to starting the engine. Before engine start, you will operate the yellow electrical hydraulic pump here. This will pressurize the yellow system and the PTU will pressurize the green system. When you have started engine number two, the blue system will be pressurized via its own electrically driven hydraulic pump. These three hydraulic systems, they connect individually into their own services. Let's take a look at the services that they connect into. Here I have listed and the poster that's available from the ATP Academy and part of this course, you are able to see the exact same layout right here in front of you as we go through it. The green system has the majority of the primary normal operation of services. 
we can highlight here that the green system has the landing gear, the normal operation of the flaps and the slats, together with normal braking. But while we have normal braking on the green system, we then have alternate braking on the yellow system. While we have normal flaps and slat operation on the green system, we have backup slats or supporting slat operation from the blue and flaps are on the yellow system. You will also find that the flight controls are divided between left and right and some of them are even triple connected to allow for redundancy such as rudder. Rudder you'll find on all three. Spoiler panels do not have redundancy as we talked about in, in flight controls, but the individual spoiler panels are connected either via the green, the blue, or the yellow. So losing one or even two hydraulic systems will not render your aircraft inoperable in terms of spoiler deflection for roll control. When we look at how these systems or these services are divided, it's easy to see that redundancy has been built in through multiple layers. What we want to pay close attention to right here is what I mentioned before, why we start, for example, engine number two first. Well, we need the nose while steering and we need the alternate braking but most importantly, we need the parking brake. Once the aircraft has power on one engine, it is in fact capable of moving under its own power. And so we want to have the parking brake. At the top portion up here, I have outlined low priority services. These low priority services I have grouped because they sit downstream of the priority valve that I was talking about before. If we have limited pressure, limited fluid in the system, the priority valve will close, cutting off hydraulic fluid to these services, maintaining the pressure that is left for flight controls and braking action. We can fly and operate the aircraft without flaps, slats, and landing gear operation because the landing gear can be put out via gravity and that does not require us to use hydraulic pressure. And at the bottom you are able to see the leak measuring valves which as we discussed will automatically close should there be a leak detected in either of the lines. And that was the normal operation of the hydraulic system and how it connects. In this presentation, we don't talk about the abnormal operation of hydraulic systems, but I will outline one thing to you. This aircraft does not operate without hydraulic fluid or pressure. There is no backup redundancy built in for mechanically operating the aircraft. In flight controls, we did talk about control laws, normal law, alternate law, direct law, and we talked about mechanical backup. But there I was also very specific about the operation of mechanical backup and how you can operate the rudder and a trimmable horizontal stabilizer through trim wheels and rudder pedals. But you are operating via cables a hydraulic valve that allows hydraulic fluid to go to those actuators to operate the control surface. You are not capable of operating the rudder pedal to the rudder panel directly using force on your feet. It isn't physically possible. So if you lose all three hydraulic systems on this aircraft, if you lose fluid in all three hydraulic systems, this aircraft is not flyable. We can lose all electrical power on the aircraft, but we can never lose all hydraulic power. That has never been seen before and it will render the aircraft inoperable, period.